Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today we have a fuel for thought, a return of the FFTs. In a moment, I'm going out for a drive in the Ferrari GTC4 Lasso, which ties me on very nicely to the topic of conversation, the new Ferrari Pura Sangue, the successor in many ways to this Ferrari's new V12 powered FUV, as we've been calling it. But more specifically, I want to touch on the rising cost of cars, the rising price tags that are assigned to pretty much everything across the board, whether it's at the supercar end, cars like the 812 Competizione, the Lamborghini Aventador replacement, the Aston Martin Valhalla, whether it's performance cars like the new M3 Touring or the M4 CSL, or whether it's, as I said, the step up from the previous four-seat V12 Ferrari to the new one. I think not so many people have touched on the cost side of this, but I know from talking to other clients of these kind of cars, it is actually a consideration that is playing on people's mind, including my own. I want to give you some thoughts on what I think of the new Pura Sangue as well in just a moment. So it's an FFT, that means I need to hop into the Lusso, we'll get it started, head straight on out and go for a drive. following my channel for a while, you might remember I started my Fuel for Thought videos back in 2016, shortly after I had bought the 675 LT Coupe, the 981 GT4, and very topically, my original Ferrari FF. The idea was on days when there wasn't really too much going on to share with you some more thoughts about the ownership experience of these kind of cars, the world of these kind of cars. And actually the very first video I made in this series was driving the FF, talking about some of the running costs behind, oh, nice Alpha 4C going the other way, the running costs involved in cars like this. There have been plenty of videos along the way, but today I wanna to touch, as I said, on where the market is currently going and what's changed right the way from the very top, the hypercar level all the way down filtering through the entire different kind of price categories, performance levels of cars, to be totally honest. Now, you will possibly also know that this is not my first GTC 4 Lusso V12. I have owned two GTC 4 Lussos with the V12. They also make it with the turbocharged V8. And prior to those, I had the FF. So the FF was 2015 to 2017. My first Lusso was early 2019 to late 2020. This Lusso I bought at the start of this year. So it's about, what are we, eight or so months into a ownership so far, always with the V12s, and I have been big, big, big fans of these cars. Now, I've talked a few times about how Marmite they can be. Some people absolutely loathe the fact that Ferrari make a car like this, that Ferrari make this shooting brake style, three-door, sporty driving, front mid-engined, coupe style thing with back seats. And there are plenty of people who loathe the Pura Sangue for a very similar reason. Lots of references to what Enzo Ferrari himself might be thinking about Ferrari making a car like that. But I think it has been brilliantly marketed. There is so much hype right now for SUVs, for sports utility vehicles, for raised up, lifted, practical vehicles. But it's not actually an SUV in the typical sense of the industry and what we understand as an SUV. And that's why this phrase FUV, which Ferrari had used a little bit in the build-up, but seemed to have completely removed from the official marketing documentation of the new car. It's why I think that's quite interesting because it's Ferrari's take on it. You know, this was Ferrari's take on a practical estate car. And it's one I love and have done so many miles with between the three cars that I just mentioned. I've done a lot of miles with these things. This one's about five and a half years old, and other than a couple of tiny little rattles and noises, it's done 17,000 miles. It actually still smells new. It smells and feels really, really new, and I'm hoping we'll get some open roads up ahead to demonstrate a little bit of the V12, including a tunnel run, so stay tuned for that. But they're cars that, like I say, have been done the Ferrari way, and the Pura Sangue is also the Ferrari way. It's not your normal SUV, and what do I mean by that? It's got the engine up front. It's a front mid-mounted V12. That, to begin with, is utterly ludicrous. Open road. I mean, that noise in a new SUV, 
Yes, please. It's transaxle, so like this, the gearbox is towards the back for the weight distribution to be just the same as the Sports GTs, the 812 Superfast, for example. And talking 812, the engine comes from that. It's the 6.5 litre V12. This car has the 6.3. We know that it's glorious. We know that the 6.5 is glorious. This car has 690 horsepower. The Pura Sangue has 725. That makes it the most powerful combustion engine SUV out there. Yes, there's the Tesla Model X Plaid, but that's, you know, for somebody like me, it's not the same thing. I buy this car because I want the emotional connection with it. I want to drive it. So what am I saying about Ferrari not making it as an SUV? Well, it's lifted, but it's not significantly lifted. It's a couple of centimeters longer. It's a couple of centimeters wider, but it's only 20 centimeters taller. And I'm sure at least five centimeters of that is in the headroom. So it only sits 15 centimeters higher above the ground probably from the seating position than this does, which is actually still pretty low for an SUV. It's actually only eight centimeters taller than an Audi RS6. Only eight centimeters, like this much taller than an Audi RS6. Um, it's only, I think, three centimeters taller than an A6 all road. Does that not tell you that this is not really um, an SUV? It's a sporty Ferrari to begin with. It will be epic, but let us bring this to the cost. The cost of the Pura Sangue and the cost of so many cars across the board. If you wind back about 20 years or so, if you wanted to buy a hypercar, you had basically one choice, the Bugatti Veyron. That was your only million dollar, million euro, million pound car on the market. Now, there are, I think, maybe 40 or 50 different cars that break into seven figures, depending on your currency, which is, again, absurd, just like the sound of this engine. But it's a sign that starts up towards the top and then you look at supercars you know an f430 was about 115,000 pounds whereas an sf90 which is now your v8 mid-engine supercar from ferrari is about 450,000 pounds you can see that that's changed quite a lot for less than 20 years for less than two decades to basically threefold the price of these kind of things. And you see that across the board. You know, I remember when an E46 M3 was £40,000. The G80 M3 I had was just over £80,000. More than double. Yes, okay, it's 20 years later, inflation and all sorts of other factors. But the market has shifted upward. And we see this with so many of the supercars. The Valhalla, you'll spend £800,000 or so on your spec Valhalla for a car that will be legendary, I'm sure. But they're making, you know, 999 coupes plus who knows which other derivatives might follow. It's a lot of cars and it's a lot of money. The SF90 itself is a talking point. The 812 Competizione, a spec 812 Competizione Coupe is £500,000. £600,000 probably nearly £1,000 for an Aperta. It's a lot of money compared to an F12 TDF or compared to a 599 GTO before it. And every successive generation of a car does step up the game. Of course they do. You know, the M4 CSL, big cash again. New C63, uh, C63 SE performance. Big, big, big cash for sure. But the Pura Sangue steps it up a lot. Now, the GTC 4 Lusso V12 in the UK was £230,000. The V8 was £200,000 almost on the nose. In Europe, the V12 was about €260,000. They haven't given us UK pricing yet. We can guess. Oh, nice. Is that a GT4? Sweet. 718 GT4. But in Europe, the Pura Sangue is going to have gone up five or six years after the V12 Lusso that was 260,000 euros to 390,000 euros. Massive, right? 50% step up. Now, I expect it's going to be 350, 360,000 pounds base price before you add your options. And let's talk options because this is key as well. On the Pura Sangue, the glass roof that we have as standard in here is an option. That will certainly be another 25,000 euros, something like that, 20,000, don't know exactly. Then there will be all of your other options. And don't get me wrong, when you spec up a Ferrari, it's both an amazing experience and it's a wonderful place to be. I love driving this car, absolutely love being in here. But you can easily spend 100,000 on your options. And if you go with tailor made things and change the liveries and designs and stuff, you'll spend even more still. So the reality is in euros, you'll be spending 600,000 euros. You'll be spending 475,000 pounds on a Pura Sangue. That's a lot of money for an SUV. That's a lot of money. And I've actually, like I said, been speaking to people, multiple people who have said, e, uh, hold up a second. You know, this is my practical family car. And that's like four times a new Range Rover. 
you know this is big cash so this is where it gets interesting in terms of demand you know for companies we go back as I said when I did my first look and talk about the Pura Sangue initially for companies like Porsche when they introduced the KN, Bentley when they introduced the Pentega, Lamborghini when they introduced the Urus, even Rolls-Royce when they introduced the Cullinan these cars have been hugely in demand they've changed big things for the companies becoming instantly a significant part of the production line whereas the Lusso for Ferrari never really has been a, a flagship I don't know how many of these exactly they've made but in comparison to 812 super fast it's a tiny fraction it's like a fifth of the number something like that you know the 812s are well there are quite a lot of them around whereas this is really I don't know there are certain places you see lots but the production numbers are nothing like the same even though driving down a lane like this it's a really really nice place to be it is a lovely lovely thing to drive so this is again back to the marketing side of it because I know that Ferrari have said that the new Pura Sangue is going to be really hard to get. It's a V12 initially, I think we can place bets that other engine derivatives like the V6 hybrid system will come down the line, maybe the turbo V8 before that, I don't know exactly um, what we're going to be seeing. But by making it super limited, it's created a level of demand which now means they can sell way more of them than they sold of this, even though fundamentally in my eyes it is the successor to this. It's just a slightly lifted version of one of these. You know, it doesn't have, like even the Urus, all of these sand modes and drift modes and whatever. It doesn't have any of that. It just has your normal Manatino and your normal um, suspension system settings, although it does have three instead of the normal two. It does have soft, medium and hard as opposed to just bumpy road on or off. But they've done this in a way that has created a demand by so many people to get one of these and it's a fabulous looking thing honestly like I'm super super excited I've seen plenty of the camo cars over the years when I've been around Maranello when I've been in Italy but even in other locations just while those cars are out testing everywhere and obviously being refined and going through the motions to get them ready and hearing all of the sound clips and bites that had a V12 even when people were thinking that Ferrari wouldn't do another V12 again but kind of safe in the knowledge behind the scene that yeah they will and they'll do another one as well in case you're wondering like the next A12 that's got a V12 for sure so do not fear at this stage even the Daytona arriving for example but to offer that in this day and age to offer a six and a half litre naturally aspirated V12 car with no electrical assistance is one of the most bizarre things that they've been able to do that only Ferrari can do it's not the only V12 SUV because also the Cullinan twin turbo engine that you find in that, the 6.75 litre twin turbo V12 in there, but obviously Cullinan and Pura Sangue are not exactly the same thing. Now, there's been a lot of talk about the name Pura Sangue, which in Italian means thoroughbred, and arguably this is not a thoroughbred traditional Ferrari in the organic sense of it, but the idea from Ferrari's standpoint is that they're trying to make it a car that drives like a Ferrari and a lot of people don't realize what these are going to be like you know when I got my first FF I couldn't believe how much it actually felt like a 458 Italia at the time you know that was the the mid-engine V8 supercar at the time the 458 was so sprightly in its throttle response its steering feel and the FF mimics that the Lusso softened things down quite significantly the Lusso both the suspension but also the drive and the things getting quieter like climate control I remember in the original press briefing there was so much emphasis on how much quieter the air conditioning is and that I think summed up a lot of what the approach for the car was don't get me wrong it's a brilliant car to drive and since buying this car I've done 7,000 miles or so in it most of which was in the first couple of months so it's a car that I have spent a lot of time driving or having driving with me wherever we've been going and even the other day I had four people in here going somewhere and it's a really nice place to be you've got those supported buckets in the back the Pura Sangue is even better even more headroom even more space still with the glass roof if you prefer it or you can have a carbon fiber roof but also with all of the infotainment and the the funky like toggles and dials that pop up out of the dash and all of that stuff so it's a really I would say winning package now previously I had assumed a spec car would be 350,000 pounds not 450,000 pounds plus and at 350,000 pounds I was super keen don't get me wrong I'm still super keen I'll come to that in a moment but when you think of the amount of money it's probably going to be more than my SF90 Stradale more than my 1000 horsepower hybrid Ferrari super slash hypercar for the practical car for the support car for the family car and this brings us a little bit to driving with this engine in the current world obviously for petrol heads this is glorious i mean all throughout this video 
you just have this whine in the background. You have this burble as we come towards a standstill. It screams as we're going to get again in a couple of minutes when we get out to a, a faster paced dual carriageway. And there's so much about it that just has character and crucially also has emotion that has this sound. I mean, just listen to that. And that's only up to 4,000 RPM or so at the speed limit here. It's an engine that it's perfect, right? It's, it's absolutely perfect. But I do quite enjoy driving the SF90 all the time. I'm sorry to say it because I enjoy driving the hybrid. I enjoy the silence and the ease of it and the electric drive going back into London. It's just a really pleasant experience. So I can imagine the V6 hybrid version of the Pura Sangue give it even more power than the V12. That's gonna be a cracking car. It's gonna be an absolutely brilliant car. However, Purus, are always going to lean towards the V12, myself included. It would be my choice because there's something about that tradition of a Ferrari with a massive V12 engine. You know, you go back to the 1960s Lusso, for example, and all of the other models that they've made throughout the years that follow this formula, that do this. <laughs> I love it, absolutely love it. I'm going to go through a little tunnel. This is where I have to cheekily just drop the window a touch, first gear. Just, just for fun. <laughs> it's so good. It's so, so, so good. Oh, the red traffic light on the exit of the roundabout. I mean, it's like I said, it's a really nice car to drive. Just here. The way it snaps with the seven speed DCT, we've got the newer gearbox for the Pura Sangue, the eight speed obviously that we've seen across the board in all sorts of different Ferrari models recently. But this is a, this is a car, and the Pura Sangue will follow it, that isn't like anything else. Ferrari don't copy anyone else. They do their own car. You know, the Urus, just pause for a second. <laughs> the Urus is effectively sorry to say this, an Audi Q8 or RS Q8 or SQ8 or whatever, four litre twin turbo V8 engine with Lamborghini design flair. And that's cool, don't get me wrong, it's a perfect car, 200 grand Lamborghini SUV, brilliant. Half the price, obviously, of the Pura Sangue. But the Pura Sangue will do this. And that to me is virtually priceless. So will I buy a Pura Sangue? That remains to be seen, certainly talking about it. Obviously, given the limited numbers, you're not gonna be able to just walk off the street and buy one. You'll need to be an existing Ferrari customer. Almost like buying an 812 only. You need to be on a list and tick the right criteria, you know, right, own the right cars before, and obviously have the relationship there, which is quite interesting. And it's similar-ish with an Urus. Now it wasn't in the earlier days. Anybody could just walk in and, and buy one. It was a different thing. But this is supply and demand, right? And Ferrari will do, as I'm sure, well, as I know they've done before, a brilliant job of having really short supply. And down the line, they'll become more available. I mean, 812 GTS, same kind of story. It was really hard to get one initially. They were only going to be for you know, real uh, VIPs and then they made quite a lot. It's Ferrari marketing. It's just something you get used to and you know a little bit more about the market. That's why I like doing these FFTs and I can tell you more about this kind of thing from behind the scenes and the way they work and the way they do it. In here though, how cool is it to have a Ferrari that you can actually use? You know, I've taken multiple of my FF and Lussos to Ikea, to shopping runs, to do errands, to daily drive, and now they're gonna be even better, you know, with having back doors. And yes, they're the scissor doors, which I'm kind of intrigued like where the door handle is and how that actually opens. That I will have to find out when I get to film the car in person at some point down the line in future. But this is, yeah, this is, this is the, inevitable direction for Ferrari to head. We've all been waiting for it for ages. We knew it was going to come, but I think the result and the way that they've done it <laughs> is so good. And hold the revs there, 5,000 or so, up towards 6,000. And then, Goodness gracious me. There's 
nothing like this, and there's nothing like the Pura Sangway, and that's where they've done an amazing job, even if the price has bumped up a lot. So it remains to be seen how successful the model will be. The order books are full, I think basically the first three years, during which time they're gonna produce the V12 already fully sold out. But with this general shift in pricing, I think it's gonna make, as I've talked a little bit about, more of a shift back towards collectible cars, cars that have a lot of emotion and character, but are less money. And you know, you see some cars that were a thousand or two a few years ago now being five or 10, because the demand for those has come up significantly. People are being very nostalgic in the modern world. I told you it was worth hanging around, right? Keeping on watching to get more of this. And even if this car isn't at the forefront of my channel, it's certainly a car that I drive a lot, even when the cameras aren't rolling, because it's just so useful. And I love the fact that I can drive a Ferrari and do whatever with it and go wherever and just actually drive the thing, do actual things with it that you want to do with a nice car. So yes, I'm quite excited to find out more about the Pura Sangue. To make hanging with me even better, we have a proper tunnel run coming up now. One of the greatest things to do with a Ferrari V12. Second gear. <laughs> the snap on the red line. I mean, it's just amazing. Even the details like the shift lights they have at the top of the steering wheel. I love that you get 70 miles an hour right there. It's perfect. Second gear to the top. <laughs> Absolutely priceless. Right, back into cruise mode. That's in sport on the gearbox. Obviously you've got various different settings and modes and things that you can change and go down to comfort and wet and slippery, or you can go all the way and have ESC off. ESC off, but we'll keep it on for the time being. I don't know if the guy behind was either enjoying that sound or not enjoying it, but he's right behind now. <laughs> anyway, I think that's pretty much it for my musings today. Like I said, FFT videos, just about sharing some insights, some thoughts from my end about the state of the market, the car world, costs, experiences, things that I've learned or found out or been a part of and just keeping those open with you and letting you know what's going on. So for today, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers!